Well, greetings, viewers of Voyeurs with Got That Funk. Thanks for joining me. Um, tomorrow on the Breakfast Club channel, I'm going to be talking about the first 10 days of Trump's presidency and my reaction to some of the things that he's done via executive order. But in this video, specifically on this channel, I wanted to concentrate on what's being called the Muslim ban and my reactions to it and my reactions to some of the reactions to it. All right. Uh, first of all, whether or not this is legitimately a Muslim ban is a bit of a moot point at this stage. Okay. Uh, the reason I say it's a bit of a moot point is this. Even if you take Trump at his word that this is uh, not a total ban for all Muslims and everything like that, and it's not going to lead to that, um, the bottom line is that uh, people who have the right to live in America have been getting denied at airports the uh, right to come back to America, even though they have a green card, they're legal immigrants, and they should enjoy pretty much all the same rights that every other American enjoys. And Thankfully, a federal judge stepped in and said, uh, actually, no, Mr. President, you don't have the authority to do that without more judicial process. So uh, thank goodness for the checks and balances that exist in the Constitution. I'm sure Donald Trump and Steve Bannon were seething with fury when the federal judge in New York decided to uh, put a stay on this executive order until uh, further ju ju judicial process um, and so forth. So. You know, it's early days and we don't really know how this is completely going to play out. I think it's time for Congress to step up and uh, get in the president's way when it comes to some of these executive orders that he's been sort of signing all willy-nilly and so forth. I find it interesting how uh, some of my um, viewers uh, who are conservatives in America have been critical of Donald Trump, uh, sorry, of um, Barack Obama in his last year and a half of his presidency for issuing so many executive orders, even going so far as to call him a tyrant for, um, you know, issuing so many executive orders. And yet when Donald Trump comes in, it's virtually all he's done as president is sign one executive order after another and just make laws up uh, because he wants to. Uh, uh, an awful lot of what Trump's been doing doesn't really seem to be in the national interest, if you ask me. And like I say, I'll talk more about that on the Breakfast Club channel tomorrow. However, when it comes to this Muslim ban, as a expatriate, I was really worried how other people around the world were going to look at the United States um, because of Trump's executive order. However, Q stage right ordinary Americans. I would like to personally thank everybody who attended a demonstration at an airport over the weekend and continues to demonstrate against this heinous decision by President Trump. Um, I was so encouraged to see so many people spontaneously pour out and go to their nearest airport to demonstrate against this ban. Thousands of people turned up at airports all over the country. No one paid them to go. No one asked them to go. Their conscience made them go. Bless you all. Thank you all. Um, if you look at the Muslim ban hashtag on Twitter, you will see scores and scores of Muslims from all over the world who are watching this from wherever they are and really feeling genuine gratitude and having their faith in humanity restored that so many people who apparently are not Muslim are standing up for the rights of Muslims at this time when they need it. And if you look at some of the photographs from the various airport demonstrations, you'll see lots of people holding up signs saying, you know, this, I'm, I'm Jewish and I don't support this and, and so forth. Because it's really ironic and quite unfortunate, if you ask me, that this whole thing kicked in right around the uh, anniversary of uh, Holocaust Memorial Day. So um, I think the timing was pretty ill-conceived by Trump, for one thing, but uh, uh, in a sense it didn't really matter because I don't think there was ever a, a good time to do this because this is not a good thing to do. I myself am going to be attending a demonstration uh, Monday evening at Downing Street in central London. That's the Prime Minister's residence. I expect to be joined by at least 10,000 uh, Londoners of uh, all walks of life. And I'm looking forward to seeing the speeches and uh, shouting and chanting my disapproval at Theresa May's relative silence. Um, she has, at least at, since uh, I originally heard about this demonstration, she has released a statement basically saying that we don't agree. 
And that's not exactly condemnation. That's just saying we don't agree. Uh, so it's a bit weak if you ask me. And I feel, since I live within range of going to a place where I can demonstrate and uh, be counted with uh, so many other people saying, no, I oppose this, I feel it's my, my duty to go and do so. Now, duty to what's right is what I wanted to talk about for the rest of this video because earlier today on Twitter I saw Mr. Repsion reply to someone's tweet who was at the Seattle Tacoma airport and she had tweeted out that the police were using pepper spray on peaceful demonstrators and that they needed reinforcements, more demonstrators to come in and take their place. Now I have no way of knowing whether police were actually using pepper spray at the airport. Um, I haven't seen any reporting yet to that effect uh, from Seattle or any other places and I have been watching quite a few videos of uh, the airport demonstrations but so far I've not really seen anything like that happening so far. But Mr. Epsion uh, replied to this young lady saying that um, you know he said basically good they should be getting pepper sprayed if they're interrupting people's travel plans. And uh, my friend Tommy from the Bronx um, uh, did a reply tweet basically in agreement with that. Now, me and Mr. Repsion, we, we, we get along okay, I suppose, but I don't think he likes me very much. Tommy from the Bronx, on the other hand, I consider one of my internet friends. We've known each other for years and years here, and we get along pretty well. So I know he will understand and accept my uh, cordial disagreement, because Tommy, quite frankly, uh, people are exercising their constitutional rights to demonstrate against something that they think is an abrogation of, of what we stand for as Americans, you know. And the right to travel is obviously that belongs to people who are trying to travel absolutely and as someone who relies on international travel frequently myself I can appreciate you know when you go through an airport it's stressful enough even without a demonstration getting in your way and when a demonstration gets in your way it's going to be very agitating indeed I have absolute sympathy with people whose travel plans might have been disrupted or even postponed somewhat by these demonstrations however the use of pepper spray or anything stronger, like perhaps a taser, uh, to get people out of the way? I'm sorry, that's an inappropriate use of those um, tools that the police have at their disposal. It's my opinion that pepper spray, tasers, anything along that sort of line should not be used to force compliance with peaceful protesters. Pepper spray and tasers and so forth, those are supposed to exist to subdue someone who is posing a clear and present danger. If someone is protesting peacefully, they are not a clear and present danger to anyone's safety and therefore they should not have to basically suffer some form of corporal punishment, which is what it is tantamount to. Um, yeah, if peaceful protesters are, are disrupting the flow of uh, travel to such an extent that uh, it shuts the airport down, that's certainly an issue that needs to be addressed, but pepper spray, tasers, or anything like that, that's not the appropriate means with which to deal with pe peaceful demonstrators. We've got to stop thinking that it's okay to, uh, that, that demonstrating is something people do for a lark. No, they're exercising their constitutional rights, and I would argue their duty to the Constitution to stand up and say, no, these actions are unconstitutional. And quite frankly, if you have to shut an airport down because the airport is the um, the vehicle through which illegal or unconstitutional acts are being uh, carried out, then shut that fucking airport down. To be fair to the protesters at the uh, airports over the past uh, 48 hours, these are not organized protests. These are impromptu protests because this all came about quite suddenly. And as such, I don't think there is any overall goal to shut the airports down as such, for example. It's just an inevitability that if you get 2,500 to 3,000 people showing up at Seattle Tacoma Airport or SFO or LAX or wherever else they show up, they're going to be in the way. You know, it's, it's an inevitability. But I would rather live in a country or be from a country where people are free to exercise their democratic rights and to, and to um, stand up for their conscience. I would like that value to be at least as highly held as the value to travel is okay um, sometimes the exercise of one person's rights gets in the way of the exercise of another person's rights and the appropriate place to sort that out is in court it's definitely not appropriate to use pepper spray on peaceful protesters that's just my opinion if you disagree please tell me why 
I look forward to a lively discussion in the comment section down below. There's so much more that I could say, but I think I'm going to leave it there. I want to thank you for watching this video, and until next time, make all your ups and downs be ups.